Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Behind the Studs. Hey Jim. Hey. How are you, my friend? I'm fine. Really? Yeah. Okay. So hey, did you realize that we're coming up on season five? We're like two weeks away. Shut the front door. Absolutely. Not next week, but the week after will be our fifth season opening show. Oh my God, it seems like yes. We got a great guest too. I can't wait. So, really? Yep. We're not going to say yet. Okay. Yep. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Well, no, we don't tell you until you get here. The long lost uncle from Lithuania. <laughs> bottle of vodka. Nice. And I got Jameson. That's not gonna be that's a terrible mix. That's not a good mix. Yeah. I can't speak a word of Lithuanian. I I know a couple things like Labas, which means like a low Labas. 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 L A B A S. Labas. And then there's uh Solutli, which is Sveikas. And then Unsveikatos. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. <laughs> that means that could mean salute. Yeah, you, you, right may have just, you may just have uh, yeah. insulted our entire <laughs> Latvian. Right. Oh. Oh, yeah. base. Uh, the whole yeah. Latvian community now yeah, doesn't out. listen to the show. Nope. nope. That, no son of a bitch. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, I knew. I, I know my mother used to call me. She what? used to go, Dornos Capchabatis. And I'm like, wow, what does that mean? Because dumb as an old boot. <laughs> Thanks, Ma. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Ma. Yeah. There I am. Don't know what's Thanks for the pick me up. Dumb as an old boot. Yeah. Yeah. Serious. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yep. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Well, I know we got some stuff to do. And yep. I had, a, oh my God. You, you, you got, got a story? The, you got my rant. I did get your rant. I know what's coming. Oh, um, I'm just so perplexed about the whole damn thing, but it, it's kind of had a had a weird, weird story. So anyway, mm -hmm. should I just like should I mention the company? Should I just up to you, man. the crap it's out up of to you? And just just like, is, what are you doing? Yeah, you know, I don't know if you have an effect, but I think this is one of the things where um, it doesn't really a homeowner. Uh, this really won't, won't happen to a homeowner. Or, um, it's one of these things. that's just. It's this company that's doing it, and mm -hmm. they really need to get their shit together. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the only way to say it. Um, so anyway, I was renting a, some rental equipment up in New Hampshire um, at a lumber yard, and it was very convenient for me. Super people who work there. Really good. And you've used them before. I've used them all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'm in, I'm in crunch time, as you know, as we talk about on the show about the cottage. I'm doing mm -hmm. the deck, and I need an excavator for Saturday. Actually, I changed it. I was going to do it on Sunday, but I said, you know what? I need it for Saturday because then I can pour my forms, pour my pylons, and then I can finish the end of my deck. So I went in there and I saw him and I said, hey, listen, I do you have a machine for the weekend. Well, I do machine for Sunday. And they said, we got the machine for the whole weekend. You want it for the weekend? I said, no, I actually just need it for one day, Sunday. And went, well, okay, Sunday's no problem. I go, well, actually, wait a minute. Can I do it Saturday? I'm like, sure, take it Saturday. All right, no problem. So there was two people who did it. Uh, one girl was new and the other guy was watching over her. And the guy that does it all the time, he's a fire. He's a firecracker. He just knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with him before. Blah, 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 no problem. So as you know, me with people and communication is, is good. And, you know, everything is nothing really. Nothing gets to me. Nothing gets. I can I can roll with it. But when you hire a guy to run a machine at one hundred twenty five dollars an hour and you set everything up. It's crucial that everything runs, you know, in, in time and perfect sure. sequence. Yep. So here I am. I'm there on Sunday. It's confirmed. It was confirmed. That I'm going to have it for next Saturday. Thursday at quarter of six, I get a phone call from the lumberyard. Hi, James. We have you scheduled for a excavator for Saturday. And I was like, yes. Well, unfortunately, it was already in the system that it was already booked out. So you can't get it till Sunday. And I was like, hold on a second. This doesn't make any sense. You're calling me at Thursday, a quarter or six at night to tell me that the machine isn't available where you could have called me Monday morning when you went through the tickets. As a matter of fact, you know what? That's not even acceptable because it should have been in the system, just like every other rental company that the machine is taken. Right. All of a sudden, you're telling me the machine is taken on a Thursday. I said, I got my guy coming in on Saturday. Now, this is my problem. And I got to tell you, it was like, it was so disappointing. Now, here I am. 
I can roll with the punches, this, that, the other thing. Mm-hmm. But when you just totally blow me off and you get corporate on me and say, well, we're really sorry about that. We can't really, we know how you feel. Yes. But you're going to get your machine. On we understand. Sunday. We understand how you feel. <laughs> we're so sorry that mm-hmm. you get the machine on Sunday at 11 a.m. So I got so pissed I hung up on her. And then I thought about it. And I blew my steam off and I was like, wait, 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 wait. I called back. I actually knew somebody else at the Columbia who knew my phone number because it comes up in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, Ugh. I am so pissed right now. And right. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, yeah, this is a situation. Well, let me see what we can get to over you in the rental department. I says, well, don't give me the other woman because I already hung up on her. <laughs> give yeah. me somebody else. Give me somebody else to hang up on. So they give me the manager. Mm-hmm. Good. They should have just gave me the other girl. They should have just gave me the other girl. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what. I got on the phone with him and I said, okay, explain to me, please, how this is where it is. And I just got like, Jimmy, we're really sorry. We're sorry that it happened. You know, it's one of those things. And um, it was already booked out on the machine. And blah, 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 tell me all those things. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. It doesn't make sense, dude. I'm sorry. I got a rental place right down the street here in Connecticut. I walk in, I go, I need a machine. He goes, oh, it's booked. It says right in the computer, right then and there, it's booked. How, for heaven's sakes, is it not in the machine that it's booked? It doesn't make you, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. He goes, well, how we caught it is because in, a, in our invoice sequences, the numbers were all were mixed up. It were, there wasn't in sequence. <laughs> and then we realized that the thing was, I'm like, this is so archaic. Dude, dude, right. They did this when Moses was writing the tablets <laughs> for crying out loud. How can you say that? And he goes, well, I've been here for eight years. And I'm like, yeah, you've been here for eight years. And you still have this problem. Right. Dude, you don't understand. And you know what? All I got was a we're sorry. <sighs> we're sorry. That's it. We can't, you nowhere. We, we, it got me nowhere. No. Now, I didn't get like, we're going to scramble to get you another machine. Mm-hmm. We'll see what we can do. Um, we can refer you to somewhere else. And nothing. Not even like we'll give it to you on Sunday and we'll give you a discounted rate. Something. Nothing. Yeah, something. So I hung up the phone and I'm like, how am I going to make this work? How am I going to make this work? How can I make this happen? How can I fit two days in a one day with the machine? Right. So I was just thinking about it. I was just, I was just steamed. I was just so disappointed. Somebody would just like blow me off like that. And, and I spend money there. Mm-hmm. I'm not like, I'm not buying like light fixtures. Mm-hmm. I'm spending thousands of dollars there. Sure. And I don't, and I'm not standing on a soapbox going, you know how much money I spend. This <laughs> I don't give a shit. I don't do you know do who that. I am? Right. right. And, I, and I'm not that way at all. <laughs> so then I'm apologizing to everybody because I'm so upset. I called them back. I said, I was, I apologize. No, it's no problem. No problem. Where I really should still be pissed. Right. Right. But that's <laughs> not my demeanor. It's not the way I am. Right. And I, I, I felt telling woman that I, I, Sorry that I hung up on her. And this that the other thing I'm trying to make. It gets better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this I part go, I never saw coming. No. So Saturday, mm-hmm. I go over because I got to go to Lumber Yard. I got to get more two by eights for my joists and stuff. There's the machine. It's sitting right there. <laughs> sitting right there. The mm-hmm. machine that I need. Mm-hmm. So on I'm the walk- day that you needed it. Yeah. Yeah. So I walk in and I'm like, hi. I got a question. I said, why is that machine out there? And the guy goes, I'm not sure. I said, could you please find out? Could you please find yeah. out? And I'm just like that. Could you, I just, I'm being really nice. Because I'm like ready to tear something. Mm-hmm. So he's like, uh, it looks like someone just canceled the machine. Wow. You canceled the machine. Yeah. You have me on the list. You yep. didn't even call me. No. I'm driving by, and there it is. Wow. I said, uh, excuse me. I think so I could get <laughs> that machine at my house today. Could I? Yeah. Could I please? Yeah. Uh, I'll get it to you at two o'clock in the afternoon. I don't care. Just get it. There. <laughs> and they did. They got it there. I got yeah. it late. Yeah. I worked till we worked till 10 o'clock at night, <sighs> but I, we needed it. Yeah. We did it. And yeah. I was just like, oh my God. But it was so, so then the truth came out. The guys who work for the company mm-hmm. were just like, dude, we get this all the time. Ugh. We're losing so many customers. Ugh. You know, it's just like, it's, Fix it. it's ridiculous. It's just like, it's not it's that ridiculous. hard. 
Um, Get Google Calendar, something. I mean, I, I know. So, but but I yelled at the manager. I says, you know, let me just say something. So now it's my uh, now it's my responsibility to call you guys four days before I'm supposed to get this rental to make sure you didn't screw up and send it to somebody else. Right. Right. And I'm supposed to call you to find out if the invoice numbers are in sequence. Yeah. So you didn't screw up. Right. Yeah. You know, dude, I have to tell you, if I worked at a company like that and I made that kind of mistake, I'd be fired. Sure. Of course. Of course. Especially if it happens all the time. I'm going to give a great shout out to Sunbelt Sunbelt Rentals. Okay. Because they're in Connecticut here. Mm -hmm. I just want to tell you how freaking great they are. So I got a machine. This is when I, because I just moved to Connecticut. I was doing all that excavating and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. Right. So here I am. They send me, they send me the wrong machine. I need to pull stumps out. I need a big baby. I need a big monster. Mm -hmm. Right. They send me something to dig out plants and put in posts. (laughs) So I lucked out because my neighbors, I, I, I was just meeting them. They had excavating equipment. Oh, nice. So they could do all the stump work and everything. Oh, wow. Everything nice. out. Yeah. So we were good. The, I called customer service and I told them, listen, this is, this is an apple. I need an orange. You know, I need a watermelon. This is not going to work. <laughs> yeah. And she felt bad. And you know what she did? She made a phone call. She called the district manager. The district manager is working on another. They were having this big event. Mm. Uh, for the veterans or something. The guy stopped. He made the phone call to me. He said, Jimmy, what's the problem? I told him. He said, how can I make this right for you? Now, that's granted. Mm-hmm. I only was renting it for like a day, and it was, it was expensive. Sure. I have to say. The guy turned around, and he said, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry about this. He said, listen, take the machine, use it as much as you need it, and when you're done with it, let us know. We'll come and pick it up. Hmm. I said, really? He goes, yeah. I said, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do with it. He goes, whatever you got to do around the house and do that stuff. You know, we don't want to lose you as a customer. Mm. Do take the machine. Right. Right. Yeah. The freaking guy was like amazing. Yeah. Called me and asked, are you okay? Everything okay? Called me twice. Wow. Not asking for the machine Mm -hmm. just to make sure I was all right. Yeah. Is it running okay? Can you still use it? Whatever you need. Just let us know. Yeah. He was so cool. So Sunbelt, Sunbelt Rentals. I don't know if they're national. I think they are. Are they? Fantastic. Never heard them, so. Well, they're up here in Connecticut. Fantastic. They were fantastic. Awesome. Really happy with them, so now do you still need that machine up in New Hampshire? Uh, I am going to, I'm looking for other ones. Okay. Like, really last. Cause you still need to rent something. I got something. I used it. Yeah. But right now. I think I'm, I'm done for what I need. Okay. But this was crucial that I needed for that weekend. Yeah. You know, now I can just, I don't, if you know, if they screw up again, I can just, ah, I don't care. I'll do it next weekend. But that's when I really needed it. Yeah. So, you know, so. Hmm. So that's my my bitch fest of the of the week. I don't blame you, man. I, I don't know how. Well, you know what I felt really bad about is this because we know how aggressive customers can be mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden I'm the I'm the customer, and I'm I'm aggressive, and I'm just I'm freaking mad, and I'm angry, and I'm pissed, and I'm yeah. like, I would I never thought in all my years in construction and work and stuff like that that I would get that worked up over something, but mm-hmm. it was, but dude, it was money, yeah, was money on yeah. the line. There's thousands of bucks that I yeah. There's money. There's you know time. schedule. Yeah, time. You know, there's there's a lot go- that goes into the that. Only trying thing, to plan something like that. The only thing I regret is what I wanted to tell the manager, and I wanted to tell him is because, and I I, I ran it through my head after it was over, and I was just, I felt like saying I said you know, dude. I have a responsibility. I have a big responsibility. I have a responsibility to my friends to my family and to the people that work for me, you know, mm-hmm. and when I let them down, the whole machine breaks down. Sure. And it, I have been consistent and people rely on me. Mm-hmm. They rely on me. And when this happens, I fail. Mm-hmm. You don't fail. I fail. Right. Do your job. Yeah. Do your job. It's fair enough. And that's the way I was just like, wow. So anyway, it all worked out. Everything good goes. well we're happy it worked out for you I hope there was some kind of insight so you just saw the bad i talked about the bad side of me <laughs> yeah a lot of times uh tanya will start with some customer service person or something like that and then i usually get the tap to to come on in and finish it off so yeah. and i start off very nice you know i'm very very pleasant i'm easy going like you you know we can make things work uh but when it gets to a point where it's just ridiculous and just 
asinine. Yeah, that's when I lose. You're my, getting stonewalled. Yeah, that's when I lose getting anywhere quote. where you got to get. Yeah, I lose my quote at that point. I'm like, okay, let's go. I have to tell you again, and I'll r- shout out to you Best Buy. Unbelievable. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I know you've said that before. But yeah. we got another refrigerator. Nice. She said she didn't like it. And I was like, girl, this is on you. I'm yeah. done. I'm yeah. out of it. And yeah. She goes, I'll call. And he was the nicest thing. Okay, wow. I understand. And boom, we got a new refrigerator. Wow. Now she's happy. She likes it. Huh? She likes a new one? Loves it. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Onto the flooring now. Onto the flooring. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Maybe next week. Nah. <laughs> Not even going there. No, no. Nope. So hey, we had one of our listeners reach out to us. Uh her name is Kelly. Uh Kelly, thank you very much for listening. We really appreciate it. So she has a question. Yeah. Uh, she's going to start with you. Okay. Um, says, hey, I really love the show. I had a question for Jimmy. Awesome. We are replacing only our base cabinets, and I really want to sand and smooth out the upper cabinets and repaint them. Do you have a recommendation for how to paint kitchen cabinetry? And now she's got other questions here, too, but I'm going to push those off and let you go ahead and just deal with the, the proper way to handle painting kitchen cabinets so from prep top, to paint. It's the top ones? She's, That's the ones that she's doing. Yeah. So it looks like they're replacing the lowers and she's going to paint the uppers. Uh, but, you know, probably the same no matter what. You know, if it's somebody who wants to paint both base and upper cabinets, you know, what kind of what kind of advice you giving them? What, to, what are you going to tell them to do? All right. Well, the, the good news is that uh, the technology of paint now on cabinetry is like is it's got so well. So, right. so good. It has. So um, the, for the homeowner to do it. It, they can do it. Yeah. Jane decided to paint the cabinets in our house and she did a phenomenal job. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was really surprised. I mean, first thing, of course, you want to really clean the surface and sand the surface, especially the upper cabinets, especially mm-hmm. around the stove. Yeah. You get residual grease and oil that's on there. That's essential to get rid of it because you're going to be using a, a, a latex paint and any type of any oil or residual stuff that's on that wood or that surface, your paint's going to beat up. Do you have anything you recommend to use to clean? Well, the first, even before I would even start yep. anything, vinegar and water. Vinegar and water. Okay. I'd spray that down. Mm-hmm. I would clean the surface altogether. I'd probably do it two or three times. Really? I would get it, even, even though I'm going to sand it, mm-hmm. I just, you just got to eliminate it. It's almost like you're, disinf- you're disinfecting the cabinets yep. to get it. And the reason why use white vinegars because it really it cuts the grease. It's hmm. the best thing to cut the grease. Yeah. I wouldn't do a 50-50 mix. I would do a more stronger potent. I would do probably, I'd probably do 80-20. 80-20. Yeah. 80 for vinegar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd wash it down, wipe it down. I'd steel wool it. You know, I'd mm-hmm. steel wool it just to get it all or some kind of rough abrasive sponge, uh, green sponge to get it all that off. Mm-hmm. And then after that's all done and I dry it, I mean, then I would start to sand it. I would either use a hand sander, uh, sandpaper, mm-hmm. which is great because you can get into the nooks and the crannies of it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you really want to go nuts, you could use a Dremel tool to get, mm-hmm. to, depending on what kind of cabinet you got. Right. You got like the, the colonial type, mm-hmm. like the old colonials. You could use, get a Dremel to get into those little, the little concave grooves and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but getting your fingers in there with sandpaper, um, 110. 120, I mean, yeah, uh, and then, then yeah. The 220, yeah, just to get that surface. You want to get it rough. Uh, that's the important thing. De- and it really depends what's on the on your cabinets. Is it paint? Is it polyurethane? Right, right. Yeah, you know the polyurethane. The good thing about the polyurethane now uh, with paint is that, um, like I just said, once you scrub it and once you have used steel wool or you've used um, sandpaper on it. 120 to 220 um after you've done all that and then you wipe it down you clean it off again and it's dry uh, there is a good primer that you can use which has a water base it has a oil base to it that's a waterborne right? okay basically yeah yep. uh, which they say yeah can't you really get oil um there is sure williams makes what an extreme bond primer extreme bond primer okay yeah you put the extreme bond primer on there yeah let it dry, let it set up, let it cure. As a matter of fact, uh, it may dry fast. If you have the patience, I would give it a day. Yeah. Because really let that, let, let it, it cure. Yeah, yeah, let it set, let it cure. Because it's got to adhere to the cabinet too. Right. So. It's got to get into the material, yeah. let it get in there, let it get 
you know, the longer you wait, the better it is. Right. Anyway. Now, once you apply the paint that you're going to put on, I'm sure it's going to be like a semi-gloss or a gloss. Mm -hmm. um, just because it's it's easy to clean. And plus, it's, it's sharp looking. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. Um, you can use the Sherwin-Williams um, Resilience. I think it's the Resilience, which is what they use. And it has a urethane compound in it. Okay. And it is made for cabinets. Now, what about the Emerald? The, that's it. The Emerald. It's yeah. the Emerald. Yep. I was just using this the other day. It's the Emerald. Yep. It's, got, it's expensive, though. But it's worth it. Right. I mean, it's bad. It's up. an enamel too, right? It's so, got I mean, it's yeah. Got a, yeah. So. so it's got enamel. So it's hard. It's got a really hard, hard surface. Coat. Yeah. Here's the biggest thing. Now, your lower cabinets, like your um, your silverware drawer, mm -hmm. if you're going to do that. I know she's doing the upper cabinets, mm -hmm. but the ones that get the most activity, yeah, with the doorknobs and stuff like that, that urethane works really, really good. But my suggestion is this: once you put the urethane on, and it's on there. Um, I'm sure you're going to do two coats. Yep. Let it dry for 12 hours and then go put the other coat on. Go on vacation for a week. <laughs> okay. Nice. Really? I like that. Go on vacation. Yeah. Because the longer you're away and the longer you don't touch that, mm -hmm. the better off you are. Um, because it just gets to cure. You're not messing with it. You know, yep. you're not going to chip it. And it shouldn't really chip. Right. It should, it should go really well. Yeah. If you're rolling the panels, like you're rolling the sides and everything. Now you'd recommend that, wouldn't you? Like door fronts and stuff, the smooth surfaces to, to use like a mini roller. Or... Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you want to use the like the foam roller. Yeah. Um, the foam roller, which is good. It's called Wizzy Roller. Um, and when you go to show one, you tell them exactly what you're doing. They'll give you the right size roller. Nice. And um, that is like that works really, really well for a homeowner to do it. Yeah. You'll be very surprised at how happy you're going to be with the results. Now that's the face, you know, that's, that's the face of the cabinet and the sides of the cabinet. Of course, you're going to take the doors off, mm -hmm. you know, and do them the hardware somewhere. and everything right. else. Take yep. the doors off. Yeah. Grab a couple of saw hosses, put some two by fours down or a piece of plywood mm -hmm. and do them on that. And, um, you know, you'd be really, really happy with the outcome of that. And then number them. Yeah. So you know where they go back. Number them. Right. <laughs> don't fill the, don't fill the screw holes. Yeah. Know. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> seen that happen yeah yeah a little little sticky note on each one of them you really don't have to paint the inside of the cabinet as long as you do the face and the return you should be should be good yeah know? should be fine and then just use like a brush for like the little trim pieces on the inside yeah like on the face you know yeah. if they have a style or something that's in yeah. there if it's not just a straight shaker yeah. or something like that yeah. okay yeah nice yeah hey, she should send pictures yeah definitely that would be awesome Give us some before and after pictures. We'd yeah. love to see them. Yeah. Um, and then this one's more of a cosmetic thing. Also, what are your thoughts on matching the upper cabinets paint color to the wall color? Hmm. Uh, I've never seen that. That's all one thing. Even remember that house we did? She was like white, white on white. Yes. But she gave it a, just a, a slight a different tone. Yep. And it looked like phenomenal. Yep. I think. This is this is on the designer side of, of it. Right. Depending on how big your kitchen is, if it's a big kitchen, say you were doing white on white, white and a little off white, I think that's gonna look that would look bomb. So what she's saying is uh, I should have read farther into this. Sorry, my bad. What are uh, we are doing a maple based cabinet and keeping the uppers bright and white, thinking of matching the wall paint to the uppers. So that is gonna be an extreme already from like a maple to mm. to a white paint mm. yeah i'm trying to think if you would want i mean i think i also kind of agree with you i think like an off-white or a little tint different mm -hmm. on the cabinets versus the gives it a little more dimension gives it a little bit more yeah yeah, yeah dimension is a good, yeah. good term for it yeah all right well that's, that's what, what i would do that's what we think and then our wives would tell us differently so yeah, yeah. they'd be like what do you know <laughs> exactly <laughs> just put them up yeah. Just paint them and put them on. Get a good brush, too. Don't spend the money and get yourself a really good, get a good brush. Whether it be a Corona or whether it be a Purdy. Um, yeah, spend the money on those tools because those are the ones that are so effective when you brush, if you have to brush anything on or anything like that. Yeah. She did a lot of brushing. Jane did a lot of brushing. Really? They came out freaking great. Did it? I mean, that's, yeah, it, that, that takes some skill, though. You know, because you don't want brush strokes and well, a lot of that the so. emerald has has like settling agents in it. Oh, so it kind of so, just yeah, it'll just levels off. Yeah. yeah, yeah, 
Nice. Yeah. But the, oh, real quick. Listen, when you're doing that primer, do the primer, do it with a whizzy roller mm -hmm. because the, the primer doesn't have settling agents in it. Mm. So if you brush it on, yep. the brush strokes come through. Gotcha. Makes They'll sense. Come through on the cabinet. Yep. Yeah. All right. And then she had one other question about adding trim to my flat panel upper cabinet doors. Uh, I want them to match the trim on the base cabinets. Any tips? E, um, depending it. on how yeah detailed that trim is on the lower cabinets, you know, you might be able to find something that matches. Um, a lot of lumber yards have different like pencil trims and things like that that you can look at the different styles and see if you can well, kind of are match the it up. All the way to the ceiling? Are they not to the ceiling? Or... No, no, no. Yeah, we don't know. So that all yeah. depends. So yeah, I mean, I think I think it's just what she's talking about is like on the flats itself. Like it's probably like a shaker style, mm -hmm. and she probably wants to add a little piece of trim on the inside to kind of have it match mm -hmm. the lowers. Um, it's just going to be you know one of those things that you have to just try to find something that matches. You know, there's they probably won't sell it to you through the cabinet company, um, so you probably have to find it. And and to be honest with you, Lowe's, Home Depot, they do have quite a few of those pencil trims, you know, in stock which is kind of nice. And, mm -hmm. you know, it could be, it could be, um, you know, painted or it could be clear, you know, just plain wood. And then you can prime it and paint it to what you want. I see, I've seen shaker cabinets um, with like the two and a half inch uh, uh, molding, uh, like a crown molding. Yeah. The smaller molding, not the larger one, but the smaller one. Right. And that looks good. Yep. Yep. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think as far as, you know, crown and things like that, that's, you know, something that she can add on and get creative with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't know how the cabinets go. You either go, they don't, the crown molding doesn't have to go all the way to the ceiling. I kind of prefer it not to the ceiling because we know the problems you have with crown molding hitting the <laughs> ceiling is usually. Yeah, on the install splits. side, on the install, install side of things. It's, it's looks wise, it's I kind of like the way it looks all the way up to the ceiling. If you're using caulking, get Max Flex uh, from Sherwin Williams. Yes, it's the best. It's better than the big stretch in any of them. Mm -hmm. It totally holds and does a fantastic job. And that trim on the panels, you know, um, the ideal tool to have for that is, you know, a pin nailer to be able to attach it to the the door fronts. However, you know, if you use a little bit of glue, a little gr gorilla glue or one of those, yeah, that'll help yeah. keep it in 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 yeah. place. So don't go out and buy a whole new tool and compressor and everything else to go with it. If you don't already have it. Okay. That's what I think. Cool. Yeah. But Kelly, thank you very much for the questions. We appreciate it. Yeah. If anybody else has any questions, feel free to let us know. Yeah. See what we can do for that. Yeah. What you got? Anything else? Uh, no, we're trying a couple of, I'm trying the new Senco, um, the deck nailer or the deck screw. Mm -hmm. Um, had a problem with it the other day. Uh, and even all the other guys are like, I don't think it's working right. You need to send it back. You need mm. to send it back. No, we need to freaking read the directions. <laughs> okay. By the time I went back and read the directions, go, oh, that little knob right there. Mm -hmm. It wasn't set correctly. And once uh, I said, now it's now it's banging. Nice. So that sent go uh, screw, deck screw deck machine. Screw thing where you can you know, stand extension. straight up. Yep. So, yeah, work like a gentleman. Yep. So oh I'm on your God. knees, screwing around. Oh, oh, forget that crap. That's the worst. <laughs> yeah. But That's Senko so also, you can take that gun, you can use it, put putting screws into the wall, like for a sheet. Oh, wall. really? Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wow, interesting. So I'm very, very happy with that machine. Nice. Um, I got a new um, laser that I'm going to be trying out next week, mm -hmm. and um, there was a uh, tool that Ben was using today, or uh, I can't remember the name of it, the the terminology of it, but uh, I'll talk about it next week. Yeah. Uh, right now, I'm not really crazy about it. Hmm. It's, it's the tool to cut straight edge with it to cut a door. What do you call that shit? What do you call it? The multi tool? No, 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 no. If I got to cut a door down and I need a straight edge or plywood, like I'm cutting a door. Yeah. What is that tool you use? Oh my God, I'm having a brain fart. You're talking about like uh, vice grips, clamps? No. It's a tool. It's a tool. It's a tool. Put your saw in it and you cut it. It's a straight line. Skill saw? No! <laughs> That's what yeah. I would have used. Now I'm sounding like an idiot. I yeah. can't I don't talk about it. Just, I'm having a brain. All right. All right. Well, you, you got a week to think about it. I will. I'll All talk right? about it next week. Yeah, we'll be very excited. Yes, we will. 
So. Yes, we will. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another week another of Behind, week the, Studs. Behind the Studs. Coming up, season five. Happy joy, joy. Woohoo! Woo! See you next week. Bye. Bye.